how about some Pigtown Fling? Um, so, finished, before the Pibrox, anyway, finished the episode with the Pigtown Fling, which is, you know, Miss McCloud's reel, and it shows up all over the place <laughs> in the United States. It's got tons of different names, um, but Pigtown Fling was the one that showed up the most, and also, I just really liked the setting for it. So this is in Howe's Omnibus. I played it on the B-flat whistle on the podcast, and I realized that maybe most of us don't have a B-flat whistle. Um, the nice thing about this B-flat whistle is it tunes well with the jaw harp I was using. You know, you can adjust the tuning on these. Um, you can adjust the tuning on this just like you would on a uh, drone reed. You know, the tongue, the little tongue guy, is essentially the reed. I mean, it is the reed, that's what you call it, I think. But I just stick a little tack on it. Um, so friends of mine that are a little bit more like have a more robust collection of jaw harps um, we'll just kind of permanently change them and you can do that most jaw harps have that little hole in there and my buddy Abe all he does is he puts a piece of lead shot in there and then you can make adjustments to the lead shot and then it doesn't interrupt the playing you can hear how much lower that gets um, so it's that's kind of convenient. The tack that I've been using, you know, it works for a while and then it comes off and it kind of gets in the way. But yeah, I've seen other people, um, you know, professional jaw harp makers and stuff, they'll actually sand down, they'll sand, they'll sand the, the blades down a little bit, um, which I think sharpens it, sharpens it, I don't know, anyway, you can make adjustments that way, uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, the lead shot would be hard to remove, it'd kind of be in there for a while, uh, but the blue tack is pretty easy to, to come and go, so anyway, that's the tune, is Pigtown Fling, on B flat whistle, that was the so that's that. Anyway, I'll do it on a D whistle because, uh, yeah, if anybody's ever gonna learn off these things, chances are pretty good they have a D whistle and. Less good they have it be flat. So we'll use a D woody whistle here. I bought, when I got a low whistle, I didn't want it tunable, because my head, it was like, I don't want a tunable whistle because then it'll be out of tune sometimes. So if it's not tunable, then it's always in tune. Really regret that decision now. <laughs> um, Alright, that's going to be close enough. So it's a 2-4 uh, Pigtown Fling. There's a repeat there to play the second part twice as well, but I was I watched a bunch of videos um, of like kind of American folky traditional 
old-timey people playing, big town playing, and none of them repeated the second part. Um, they also had more parts, so they would play the first part twice, and then all the subsequent parts they'd just pay once through, and I found that I didn't really, especially playing on whistle, because it gets so shrill, um, I didn't really want to play it a second time, so that's how I did it on the podcast, too. Uh, anyway, that felt a little bit uh, on the fast side, and when I recorded this, um, especially to get the jaw harp right, it's really helpful to have the metronome going. Um, so, you know... I recommend it. So we'll do it around with the metronome. Is that too fast? We'll never know. He like said, so far nobody's been using these um, tutorials, so man, next time we get a Patreon joiner, they're going to have so much to listen to. So yeah, I definitely don't play it quite as written. That second part, the... It should be... Uh... Sorta. It's just, it's weirdly written. Um, I wanna, I always just, I like it better though. Just know that that's not how it's actually written. And then the, that part too, the, the, it's written. I don't know, I just don't like it as much as. so funky so funky and good um so for jaw harping it you know it's just i got a message from somebody that they wanted to buy a jaw harp after listening so clearly not everybody has one of these um but yeah they come in different keys so you just have to funk around with the blade to get the uh to get the the right pitch and then the other kind of how to play it thing. Like you can breathe through it and adds something. It was kind of recording it into the, the microphone. That's what I was pointing at here. Um, not that you can see. Um, but recording into the microphone, I definitely, you can hear my mouth too much, so. Uh, but breathing through it is a fun way to kind of poof out some volume and make that cool echo sound or the, 
Breathing in and out really fast can add that wang sound too. You can do that just by moving your tongue a little bit on the inside, but. Fun thing, playing jaw harp this week is how I realized that I inadvertently bought the wrong toothpaste because it was hurting my teeth like crazy. And I realized I bought not Sensodyne toothpaste, but some non-Sensodyne toothpaste. It shouldn't hurt your teeth. Um, but yeah, you're just, you know, the goal here is that the tongue goes through, you know, that it doesn't hit your teeth. If it hits your teeth, you're going to feel it and it's going to hurt and it could chip your tooth. Some people will play it on their lips instead. It doesn't work, you know? There just there's really no There's no substitute for that hard backing. Some people like that to play towards yourself, but I've always been away. Anyway, uh, this is a long tutorial about nothing. Uh, cheers.